In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to add a Polo client to Remix. So what are we going to be doing? We're going to be adding a Polo client to Remix. We're going to use the Apollo provider. So this is going to work with Apollo hooks such as use query and use mutation and server-side rendering is going to work. What are we not doing? This is not an in-depth look at Remix and we're not going to be building out a full project. So who is this tutorial for? This tutorial is for those familiar with Apollo client and those who know what Remix is. So I have a terminal open here and I'm going to bootstrap a new Remix project with npx create Remix at latest. I'm going to call my Remix project Remix with Apollo. I'm going to use the Remix app server and I'm going to be using TypeScript. And I'm going to say no to npm install because I want to use Yarn. So I'm going to cd into Remix with Apollo and I'm going to open this in a new VS Code window. So now that I have my Remix project open, I'm going to type yarn in the console to install the dependencies. And while the dependencies are installing, let's go into routes and delete this demo folder. And I'm going to open up index and I'm also going to remove this loader function here. And in Remix, this is the function that's going to load in the data. We're not going to be able to use these loader functions because we want to be able to use hooks that come from Apollo client and these loader functions are not React components and therefore you cannot use hooks inside of those. We can keep our meta function here and we have to remove this use data loader and let's also remove the contents of this Remix page. And I'm just going to add a word that says hi. We can also remove this index data. So there's three main files that we're going to be using, the entry.client, the entry.server, and the root file. So the entry.client is obviously going to run on the browser. The entry.server is going to run on the server. And the root is going to run on both the client and the server. And you can see in this root component, we're rendering out some HTML here, this head component, and this body. And this is going to be interesting to us later on. So now that our dependencies are installed, let's add a Polo client and GraphQL. So I'm going to be using the context API and I'm going to use the context API so we can get data from this entry.server into the root component on the server. And then once we've got that data from this entry component onto the root component, we're going to render it out to the DOM and then from the client, we're going to read that data from the DOM, and that's going to be used for the initial hydration. So let's create a new folder, and I'm going to call this context. And inside of context, I'm going to create a new file called apollo.tsx. And I'm going to import from React. I'm going to import create context. And I'm also going to import apollo client and in memory cache. So I'm going to create a function for initializing Apollo. And the reason I'm going to create a function for this is because we need to initialize Apollo on both the server and the client. So inside of this function, I'm going to return a new Apollo client. And I'm going to set the URI to this Rick and Morty API. I'm going to set the cache to a new in-memory cache. So if we're working on the client, we want to be able to restore the cache from the data that we've printed to the DOM. Let's call dot restore. And we need to pass the data from the DOM in here. So I'm going to say const initial date is equal to is browser. And we need to make this is browser function. And if it is the browser, we're going to say window dot initial state. Otherwise, we're just going to have an empty object. So let's create this is browser boolean here. So I can say const is browser is equal to type of window is not equal to undefined. 
So if we're working in the browser, then type of window is not going to be undefined. It's going to be an object. But if we're working on the server, then window is going to be undefined. And we're just going to use an empty object for our initial state. The reason we need to do this is browser check is because on the server, we don't have a window object. And so we're going to be calling initial state on undefined, which is going to throw an error. So let's pass our initial state into restore. And because we're working with TypeScript, the initial state here does not belong on the window object. So let's go fix that. We can open up this remix.n for d.ts. And I can say interface. window and I'm going to say my initial state is equal to any and you can see that that keeps TypeScript happy here so let's export this in a Apollo function here and let's create our context so I'm going to say export default create context which comes from react up here and I'm going to pass in the initial state so if it's on the server our initial state is going to be an empty object, but if this is being run on the client, we're going to have the initial state from the window object. So now let's go update entry.server. So if we have a look at what is happening here, we're creating some markup and we're just using this remix server, which comes from remix. And we're going to render it to a string. We're going to set some response headers. And then we're going to create a new response and we're going to concatenate these strings here, document type, HTML and our markup. And then we're going to add our status and our headers as well. So we need to get the initial data from the tree and we need to add that to our context that we created in here. So firstly, let's create our client. So I'm going to say const client equals init Apollo. And in our init Apollo function, we also need an SSR mode and I'm going to pass this in as a prop and I'm just going to default this to true. So on the client, we can set this to default. So I'm going to create a new component here called app is equal to, and then I'm going to put our remix server in here and then render to string is going to render our app. So we need to wrap Remix Server in the Apollo provider, and then we can use get data from tree, and we can get data from app. And that is going to get the initial data from our query. So I'm going to say Apollo provider. And then my client is going to be the client that I initialized above. And then I want to return down here, get data from and I need to pass in our app then I call dot then and I can move the contents of this up into this return function here and now I can extract the initial data from the client so I can say const initial state equals client dot extract and now when we render our markup, we want to render this markup with our Apollo context. So I'm going to come to the top here and I say import Apollo context. Actually, I can import Apollo context from here because init Apollo also comes from context slash Apollo. So now let's go use our provider here. So I can say Apollo context dot provider. And then I want to give this a value equals initial state. And now I can wrap my app in curly brackets. Okay, so our entry server looks good. Let's go add the Apollo provider to our entry client. So I'm going to create a new function up here and I'm going to call this client. And I say const client equals init Apollo. I'm going to say false because we don't want server-side rendering mode on the client. I'm going to return and I'm going to bring in our Apollo provider. Then 
then I'm going to pass in client. And then we can move our Remix browser up into the children of the Apollo provider. And then we can pass this client as the child into Hydrate. So let's go add a query so we can start testing this. So if we come into routes and index, I have this query here prepared and GQL comes from Apollo client. So I'm going to import from at Apollo client. And this query here just comes from the Rick and Morty API. And so you can see here, it's just going to return a bunch of characters from the show. The actual GraphQL API that we're using is not really relevant here. You can swap this out for whatever GraphQL API you like. Let's say const equals use query. And use query is going to come from Apollo client. And I'm going to pass in our characters query. And I'm going to pass in some variables. And I'm just going to hard code the page as one. So we get some data here. So let's json.stringify the data to the DOM here. Let's start up our server. So yarn dev. So the Remix server has started and we can go to localhost port 3000. And you can see here that we have got our data from the API. But we have some errors in the console. And if we refresh the page here, you can see that we get a blank screen and then the data flashes up. And I suspect if we look in the network panel, we're going to see a network request on the client to the Rick and Morty API. And you can see that request here. So what this indicates is that we're not server rendering this data. But if we inspect page here, and we search for something that is in the API, so we'll search for Rick Sanchez. You can see that Rick Sanchez actually appears here. So there's a disconnect between what is being shown on the server and what is being shown on the client. So let's go fix that. So if we have a look in our context here, you can see that we're trying to get some data off this initial state object. But if we go back and look at the HTML, you'll notice that initial state doesn't actually exist here. So our client is not being restored with the initial state. So let's go and fix that. So I'm going to come into the root component here and I'm going to come down to document and I'm going to say const initial date is equal to react.use context. And we want to use our Apollo context here. So I'm going to import Apollo context from context slash Apollo. Now let's console.log this value. And the thing that we want to take notice of is where this value gets printed. So you can see here in the server, we get initial state printed. But if we come over to the client and we look in our console, we get initial state, but it's undefined. Okay, so this tells us that the context only works on the server if we create it on the server. So that's okay. We need a way to transfer that context into the browser. So we can do that by printing the data to the DOM. So we can open up a script tag here. And it's going to be a self-closing tag. And I'm going to use dangerously set in a HTML. And this is okay to use here because we're in control of the data that's being passed into this dangerously set in a HTML. I'm going to say underscore underscore HTML. And I'm going to add some backticks here. And I say window dot. And I'm going to copy this from my context is equal to, and I say json.stringify. And I'm going to pass in the initial state.
then I'm going to call dot replace and I'm going to use a regular expression here just to replace some funky characters that may appear. Say so backslash backslash and then do this globally. Okay, so now let's go have a look at our DOM and see what's going on. So this is our HTML. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to search for initial state and you can see here that we get our initial state in a script tag. Okay, so let's go over to the console. I'll refresh the page here. Type in window.initialState and you can see we get this big object here. So now let's refresh our page and look at the network requests. And you can see we have no network request here to the GraphQL API and the data appears instantly. So that is how to add Apollo Client to Remix. If you want to see more tutorials on Remix, please let me know in the description below. Please make sure you've liked the video and subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.